So, in future, when you get offered protection, you take it. It's, uh, it's like insurance. A little monthly outlay, my old son, and nasty things like this don't happen. You're filth! Do you like this? But they're worthless, I swear to you. Only sentimental. That's handy, because I'm a sentimental man. So, when somebody pops in next week, you pay up like a good'un. Got it? No, please leave me my wedding ring. We'll see. We'll see if you start wising up, Mr. Wisner. Just give it some, and quick. Move it! Terry to give him a call. Oh, we will love that, will not he, eh? Getting told to come over his tea when he's on some nice little earner. Don't worry, love. Do you need to turn it down, Sam, will you? Yeah, Dad. Oh, save my life, darling. It's up. Mm. Dad, Yeah, yeah. Looks like we'll be pawning Granddad's musical box. <laughs> Paula! You could write your name in this dust. Oh, shut up. If you could write your name, of course. Only because she was blind. Dave! All right, you'll go, mate. You watch much more of that. Any joy? Just what you'd expect. Like fingerprinting the London Underground. Yeah. Can we take that? Yes. Yeah. Can I get away now? You've given my cab the business. It was only in it a few minutes. Oh, how many blinks of an eye is that? I can't credit you didn't see their faces. Not even a wee glimpse. That's straight out, Governor. I'm sitting there when the door suddenly goes and this bloke says, move it. Turn round and you're a goner. Well, words for that effect. So I move it. 
and I don't turn round. Oh, Excuse me, please. Ambition to put the Elliot Street. No, no, sorry, I'm going home. Anyway, time I get a chance to look round, they've gone at me, slung their rocks. I've got no more idea who they are than the man in the moon. Yeah. Silly of me, eh? What about their voices? Well, London, wouldn't it? Cockney. What do you expect? Oh, not a lot, sir. Not a lot. Ah, oh, be fair. I have got a living to make, Governor. And right now, you gents are costing me money. Well, I suppose we can let you go for now. Temporarily, you understand. Well, you know where to find me. Uh, don't leave the country, will you? Huh. The way I feel, I'll be lucky to leave the sofa tonight. Where did you want to go, love? Elliot Street, please. Where? Elliot Street, please. Seek temper. Okay, it's on me way. Hop in. That's right. Yes, okay then. Bye-bye. Well? No problem, Charlie. They'll have your glasses round first thing tomorrow. And they won't say more to the police than they have to. They can't just lose your records all of a sudden, you know. Listen, with my dodgy eyes, those bins are as good as fingerprints. Only if they've got the pair, Charlie. And they haven't, have they? All McNeil picked up was one arm and a lens. <sighs> Even he can't get you identified on half a pair of glasses. That cabbie's got it. Well, he must have, mustn't he, if McNeil went through that cab like you said. So who is he? Fred's working on it. And how are we supposed to get at the bloke with McNeil breathing down his neck for the next six months? Relax, Charlie. The man said nothing yet. Or we wouldn't still be sitting here, would we? Lila, I want them glasses back, sharpish. Then I can relax. You always get what you want, Charlie. Yeah. There was a photo in that cab. Some kid. When we find him, we'll see how he likes the idea of her getting hurt. Badly. I should do the trick. Leave it to me. 